Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiliruma Mokobi. As always, I try to bring impactful, uh, different and, you know, great content to you. Something you can benefit from, something that can help enhance and uh, increase the value of your life. Today, I've got something altogether different. We are shooting, first of all, from our restaurant, Black, which stands for Bistro Lounge and Cocktail Kitchen. And I have two wonderful guests. They are authors. They are twins, uh, there's so much uh, about them that I can say that is wonderful. But as always, I want the guests to speak for themselves. Which one for you of you ladies is going to introduce you? I'll, I'll try. <laughs> okay, all right, go ahead. Um, my name is Moeli Malomo, and this is my sister, Kelly Savalai. We are authors, and we are also motivational speakers. I also take some time to preach the word of God where I fellowship. Um, Kelly and I also have a campaign ba uh, campaign that we have come up with. It is based on the book that we wrote called Brought Up Just Right, where we usually, yes, it's over here, where we usually go to schools and talk to kids because this book is actually more of our background when we were young. So our strength is really in just going out to the society to make impact. I think that's wonderful, about it. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Uh, do you want to add anything to that? I uh, know, I think that's the gist of it. We're also passionate about entrepreneurship. We have a fashion line, it's also called Malls and Kells, of course Molly and Kelly's fashion line, that's just about it. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about top 10 nuggets of wisdom on your journey. It's really the subject matter is um, brought up just right, yes, you know, and it deals with this book, is the idea of being brought up just right. I assume you're telling the world that you've been brought up almost perfectly. Yes, it's, we are telling the world that everything ultimately is mind over matter. It's all about perception. Mm. That even the things that you deem as negative, there is an element of growth in there if we just decide to accentuate more the positive mm. than the negative. That's just the gist of the Brought Up Just wow, Right campaign. this is beautiful. <laughs> now we're going to start, and this one is directed to Molly. Drive, it's your journey. Yeah. What is the message that you want to articulate to the viewers, to the listeners, about the importance of it being, you know, drive, being a driver in your journey? Yeah, you see, you put a well that it's about being a driver. When you are in, a driver, you are in control of reaching a destination as opposed to when you are a passenger. So basically, that's the message behind that is that take control of where you are going. Even if there are influences around you, just make sure you are empowered enough to always maintain positivity, to always maintain clarity, especially clarity in terms of where it is that you want to reach. You see, sometimes when you grow up, discover the things that you love, discover the things that make you come alive. That is your purpose. That is your destination. And then fill yourself with knowledge Fill yourself with wisdom, with wisdom, and fill yourself with enough energy and enough positivity to go there without. And obviously, as a yeah. driver, you have to take full responsibility. Absolutely, absolutely, mm. you have to take full responsibility and make sure nobody derails you from your purpose and your journey. Okay, Kelly, would you like to take this one? Yes, I like that. And normally I like to bring it down to Molly and I's experiences. Mm. You see, when we were growing up, we are very close to my father. Mm. And he had wanted us to pursue a certain career. He loved the fact that we liked to talk. Mm. And he wanted us to be lawyers. Mm. But we didn't have that specific dream inside of our hearts. Mm. But we loved our father. So we normally want people to understand that even figures that are close to you, that are crucial in directing your journey, can be wrong. It's not. Wait a minute! Often. You didn't. You just decided not to be lawyers like me. Yes. <laughs> we, we didn't. Unfortunately, it wasn't a dream that we had inside of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you see, our father loved us. But he, fortunately, in the few times we had a conversation with him, he understood our reasons for not wanting to pursue that career. Okay. And you see, that's just the basis of it. That sometimes deciding differently doesn't mean that you love the people you love any less. Okay. It just means that you. You've decided to also try find perspective in terms of who you are okay. as an individual. Let's go to the next point. I think this one is for you, Kelly. Yes. When you say forgiveness is true freedom, yes. what do you mean? Is this from your personal life? Yes. And why do you believe forgiveness is true freedom? I hold that nugget very close to my heart because mm. when we were growing up, uh, 
we found that we were without a mother and she had left when we were about a year old. Mm -hmm. And you know, explanations surrounding her departure were of course varied. It, it seems as there was two, there were two groups actually. There was a group that was not comfortable in sharing their honest opinion as to how she left. And then there was a group that was just, uh, j that was just not honest about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, my father was also not very truthful about it, maybe out of our own protection. Mm -hmm. But you see, we... we Did you eventually find out what happened? We eventually found out what happened. Uh, after, unfortunately, when they had both passed away. Mm. But in all these years, as we, our mother is away, we are building this ball of anger mm. that when we first meet her, and this is when we are around 12 years of age, mm. we meet her for the first time, and we are just angry. Who, are, who was taking care of you for the first 12 years? I'm sure it's um, in the book. It's but in the I, book, yes. Mm. Uh, but I like that you are dig, dig, digging into it. That's mm. good. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, we had our father. Mm. We had our father and the initial years of our growing up. We had our grandmother who mm. passed away when we were just around seven. But our father was there. But the most crucial person who was there for us was our elder sister. Mm -hmm. We had our elder sister who was also there for, 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 for us during these times. Okay. The unfortunate thing is that just before my mother, mother passes, my father passes first. Mm -hmm. So I think my sister up took a lot of responsibility, especially at that point. Mm -hmm. So you see, um, the, the aspect of forgiveness meant a lot because we had a lot of chances to have a conversation with my mother, but so, we didn't. So it's, do you, who did you forgive? Your late parents or yourselves? My late, first we forgave my late mother, mm -hmm. and then we had to forgive my late father, mm -hmm. and then ourselves for not allowing uh, the chance we had to really mm. serve us mm. in the way that it was supposed to. It what, was a lesson that... Uh, was, when it a, was it a, a single event, like when some people talk of an epiphany, or was it a process through counseling? It was, uh, luckily we, 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 we trust in God. Mm -hmm. We did counseling uh, a few times, but way after we made certain decisions about our lives, and this was one of them, mm -hmm. that we have to forgive all, the, all that, that has happened in the past, mm -hmm. and we have to forgive in, even ourselves for how we dealt with it. It was just a lot of things in one. Talk yeah. a little bit, uh, Molly, about the freedom that you experienced after the, you forgave. After we forgave, I think we were liberated. We began to we began to feel to, to feel like we have come alive. We most importantly began to see ourselves as worthy mm. because we didn't have that burning um, anguish within us. Yeah. I think it was more than anything an introduction of a certain amount of peace. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Let's move on to the importance of staying calm. Uh, are you saying calm in the midst of a storm? Absolutely. We're saying calm in the midst of a storm and we're saying calm no matter the situation in your life. Mm. In this book, when we speak about being calm, we introduce God. Mm. We, we literally introduce God because we are, his, we are his creation that if he has made us in his image, sometimes we just need to go back to his character and see the few things that we can get from him. Mm. You see, God is all-knowing, all-powerful. And I sometimes think that if God wanted to, he would have created everything in a single day. Mm. But he chose seven days. He chose to create in six days. Mm. And he took a seventh day to take a rest. Yes. So if God decided that in six days I am going to do each thing, a single thing, a day work. at a time, a lot of work. Yeah. he yeah. put a lot of work into it as well. Mm. So we as people, sometimes we become impatient with ourselves. And we want to get everything done so quickly that it 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 gets so misconstrued. It gets so confused in terms of what it is that we were trying to achieve. So how do you keep calm? Some people talk about meditation. Some talk about prayer. I I talk about the word of God. Mm. There is nothing that keeps you more calm than the word of God. I. I sometimes, sometimes it doesn't matter what bothers me. And if I don't know the specific chapter that I want to go to, I just open the sounds. Mm. Because I know that, especially when it was David's part of writing, I know that this man didn't have it easy, but he was a distant king. Mm. So I go to his psalms, as there were seasons where he had to run away from attackers, but he survived it all because he had moments of reflection. 
all the psalms are, that are written are, mem are moments of reflection. He was pondering yeah. as he was writing the psalms. Wow. So I, I think the word of God wins okay. all the time. That takes us to the question of love. Love is a very vast subject. I always say love is a vast subject because in Greek, when I last checked, there are five or six words that mean love. <laughs> yeah. But in English, English there them. seems to be only one. But yeah. you say that love is the greatest force yeah. and love conquers material provisions or lack of material provisions. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Or, 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 or something like that. But I want it to come from you. Love is a greater force. In what way do you... You see, having taken you a, a, a bit through our background, mm. love was the only, possibly the only thing that sustained us. Mm. And of course, our love for God, God is love. Mm. So it all like intertwined in, in, in our lives, Jenny. Mm. Because you see, love is very powerful. I almost, I always want to speak about my sister, my elder sister, when I speak about love. Mm. Because when our parents passed, she was only 21. Mm -hmm. She was young. Mm. At that point, she could have been in a space where she wanted to discover herself. Mm -hmm. but, she but she chose to dedicate herself to growing us, to mm -hmm. nurturing us. She could have chosen differently. Mm -hmm. That is a testament of love, that when love prevails, people can overcome anything. And that people need to accentuate an environment that is filled with love more than they do an environment that is negative, an environment that is judgmental, an environment that is just so, you know, mm. that, that's just so troublesome because mm. when love surpasses everything, people progress and are just lifted to greater heights. And obviously as twins, there must be a special type of love between the two of you. Okay. Is it something you think about it or it's something you want to discuss? Of course, uh, when you, with us, we could we could be here all day. Mm. But what I like about the fact that God decided that we would be two mm. became our journey became very clear. Every every instances we had challenges, we were two. Mm. And it's not everybody who has that who are as fortunate as we yeah. were. You see, so there was always that one person you could hold a conversation about your challenge and be certain that they understand exactly what you're going through. Tremendous. That is the blessing in our being twins. Wow. And not just twins, yeah. almost identical twins. <laughs> <laughs> now, poverty, mind over matter, this is a vast subject, but I think in the book you do say something about poverty being just a matter of the mindset. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm. We, we, we touch on poverty in this book, but we're not really demeaning that poverty. The book I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we're not really saying that poverty is not something that should be taken seriously, but mm. we're just saying that sometimes when you think you're in a state of poverty, you find that your perception of the situation you are in might actually be more detrimental to you than the actual situation itself. Mm. And, and when I talk to my sister uh, before, when I talked to her before we put it in the book, we spoke of ourselves mm. because there's a time that we were taking care of the government. The government fed us, the government fed, bought a school uniform through the local council. Mm -hmm. And that, that thing was so embarrassing to us. But what now, was the name of that scheme? Um, what was it? it? The, was the orphanage um, and, and destitute scheme, I think. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So you're registered, you, and what you do is go there once, once, once a month. Once a month. They get you groceries every month, and then when you start your year of school, they'll give you, like, uniform, uniform and all the necessities. Why was it embarrassing? It was embarrassing. You know when you are a child, mm. you yeah. think differently. It was yeah. so embarrassing, especially when we're staying in a small town to be seen queue for food. People would know, oh, often program. Mm. So it was embarrassing in that light. Mm. But now that we're older and we think actually we were more fortunate than, than we conceived at the time yeah. because mm. for starters, we didn't have to spend to get the food. We, we mm. didn't go hungry because we had a caring program that has been formed by our government. So in mind over matter is that at that point, our, our conceptualization of things was that we were in a terrible state, mm. yeah. but we were actually more blessed than we could have imagined at it's the time. It's funny you should say that there's a book uh, I read by a gentleman called Damon John. All it's right. called The Power of Broke, and he demonstrates in that book how success comes from uh, lack and yeah. how you can actually be empowered through not having everything that you of need course. because then your resiliency yeah. and your hunger yeah. grows a bit more and you try more yeah. than somebody who's had 
or had, had abundance. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely. it is it is not necessarily a negative to no. be to be without. That's the whole So point. and I think you are the classic example of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, awesome. <laughs> <All right. laughs> now your end might be your beginning. This one when you we discussed when we were preparing for the show, I really wondered what that means. Yes. I know that Stephen Covey <laughs> says begin with the end in mind. Yes. Uh, but but now you're saying your end might be the beginning. Can uh, can you break that I down think, for us? I think Stephen Covey is probably talking about the victory part of it. Mm. But we are talking about that moment in time when you feel like it's really it really is the end of it, where you are completely broken and you don't see any possibility of a better future. Mm -hmm. When you read the book, we'll point out we'll point to our experiences when we were growing up our father was very very enthusiastic about our future because of our performance at school mm. our academia was very excellent mm. and he loved that about us and you know every end of time he would actually buy us gifts because we've done really well and when he passes away Molly was way way better than me in this regarding that she maintained her focus but my results dropped drastically literally from an A student to a D or an E student and you know because at that point it made made a lot of sense for me to not even focus as much as I used to because the source that used to reward me for such an effort mm. was no more. Mm. So you see, I needed to, to now redirect my thought process mm. such that I see the, the, the value of investing all of me into a future that could be. Mm. And because I did that, I think towards the end of uh, my form two, just beginning form three, because this was when we were in junior school, mm. I started now wanting to build a better future for myself. I had to shift my focus completely so that I begin to value the things that I need to value, even away from the people that I loved who are obviously normal. Mm. So you see at that point, I Did you get back to being an I, A student? I did. Mm. I did at the end of the Form 3 results, there were only three A's in our school and I was right there with them. And her. Winning. And her. Yeah. <laughs> she had always been there, so she never <laughs> lost her position. Yeah. I just had to get back to mine. Okay. So <laughs> what did you do? What was the key? thing for you uh, for your end becoming your beginning what was the turning point the turning point and mostly when I tell people this they are always like but how the turning point for me was literally deciding differently mm -hmm. it was literally choosing that my future will be different mm -hmm. deciding that my future will be better that if I've done it before, then I can do it again. And because I was a victor and as I was a winner before, it means it's something that is within me. Mm. It has not died. It is just sleeping and I needed to awaken it. So and you, I just, you didn't and I, read a particular book or no, your twin sister didn't persuade you? It just happened. That's why I tell you that we have a very special relationship with God. Like sometimes I say, this man spoils us. The men above. <laughs> because sometimes we have this light and this wisdom and unlike many people we never really needed to open any book. Mm -hmm. It's just prayer and meditation and just indulging and engaging in his word that ultimately you said, wait a minute, I am his creation mm. and obviously I'm my, I, I have a reason for which he has created me. I need to tap into my greatness. Wow, wow, I love that. <laughs> this season is now. I've read a yes. book by a guy called Eckhart Tolle called read, The Power of Now. Uh, yes, I read a lot. Yes. And, uh, and here we're talking about the power of now. Yes. Uh, but you are saying it differently, the season is now. Yes. Can you break that down for us, Molly? Um, when we say the season is now, really I think that's the most simple of our chapters. We're just speaking against procrastination that sometimes we just keep on saying one day, one day. And I, I know there's a saying that are you a one day person or a day one person? <laughs> so we're basically, we're basically emphasizing that let this moment, the present moment, let it be so relevant that you harness out of it every opportunity there is to harness. Let it be so relevant that it reminds you of where you want to go and what are the resources around you at this particular point in time that you can utilize mm. and be able to use to get to where you want to go. Yeah. And we are, we are basically saying stop planning forever. Yeah. Plan, yes. but don't plan forever. Yeah. Yeah. Brian yeah. Tracy says that a lot of people live in an island called Someday Isle. 
Absolutely, yes. 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 The serpents around you. Yes. Uh, we're not talking about snakes, are we? No, not the actual snakes. Snake. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so break that down, Kelly. The what does it mean? The serpents around you is about all the influence, the external influence you have around you. You see, when you understand your individuality and the peculiar, pe pe how peculiar rather your journey is. That's when you get the uniqueness. To, the uniqueness. Mm. That's when you get to appreciate just how God, what God had in mind when He created you. Mm. So we need to be really careful of the people around us who, oftentimes, I can't blame them. Sometimes they come from a good place, but they don't really understand your journey. They don't really understand what is it that you're pursuing to become. And we need to be in a position to distinguish between Some that. Some of them are literally pulling you down. They exactly. Know what exactly. Mm. So we need to be able to distinguish. Distinguish uh, those that are pulling us down from those that are growing us, mm. and I'm, I'm always saying it also needs to be reciprocal because when people around you are growing you, you also have to see how you are serving their growth. Mm. When you are in an environment that is like that, know that you don't have supports around you, but you have people that are there to serve your purpose, just as you equally serve. There's them. a friend of mine called Muhammad Zifranz. He likes saying. Uh, if you have four broke friends, guess who is number five? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Wow, that's Obviously a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to the next one, which is the venom within. Yeah. I like the, the you use snakes a lot. I'm yeah, because the we, snakes we around like us snakes. now, there's venom within. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, what do you mean by that one, and how can we deal with it? I think what Kelly was talking about now, just now, was externalities. Mm. But some Sometimes we focus so much on them and forget that we also have an impact in mm. our out in the outcome of our lives. Mm. The venom within is actually about your inner voice, your 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 thoughts, and how you are able to control them. You need to be able to capture those thoughts and and mold them such that they influence only where you want to go. You maintain your positivity. I like giving an example of Lucifer. Sorry, I like going to the Bible a lot yes, when I yes, hear this thing. Yes. I like giving giving an example of the outcome of Lucifer. He's you a see, really what, bad dude. he's yeah. a bad dude. Yeah. Terrible dude. But let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you the most fascinating thing I find in the Word of God when we read well, about Lucifer, because when God went to Lucifer, when God cast Lucifer out. Mm. It wasn't Lucifer, this is what you did. It was, I've seen within your thoughts, I've seen the shape of your thoughts that you have thought within your head that one day I'm going to be taking the throne of God. So you see, a simple thing I as a thought. He acted also. His action, if you, if you recall, his action was more of a reaction after he was told about his own thoughts. Mm. That is when now he started, remember he was also the greatest of worshippers. Mm. Because of that, he molded, he's a good singer. he was a good singer. This mm. is why he's influenced, well, we can't go to that one yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. But because of that, he's, he shaped his, his thoughts. Mm. To, to more of rebellious thoughts. Mm. He, because he thought, I'm the one that's making this person more, this being more praised through my music. Yeah. So this is how I should be greater. I am the one that is singing. Yeah. Mm. I am the one that is saying out mm. all the great things in praise to this, to this being. Mm. And because of such thoughts, he ended up being against the... I wonder who that's a good question. He had the because venom within. He had the venom, venom within. within. That was the venom sometimes within. Sometimes the venom within is just something we build within ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sometimes yeah. it's because like... Because I've, I've, I've read that 
some people have what they call internal locus of control yes. as opposed to external locus so Absolutely. they are able to control yeah. um, that so you are urging people to really get to rid of the that. venom and, and yeah, yeah. To be, and it, it takes that. it takes it takes a lot of practice it's not easy yeah. even now sometimes a, an evil thought can cross your mind yeah. an evil thought of disobedience an evil thought of just doing something terrible yeah but it takes practice to master that it yeah. takes time so it takes starting to learn to master those thoughts okay. yeah you talk of the soul the soul is a very difficult thing to grasp but you say which master do you forage yes. um, first let's talk about the soul what are you talking about and then which master do you forage um, you have to really unpack that for us yeah the soul is the center of who we are. Mm -hmm. And because the soul is the center of you, who we are, it's very crucial for us to have a perspective of our creator. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear people, for, for us faith was everything. Mm -hmm. This is basically faith, mm -hmm. you know, believing in a God we've never seen. Mm -hmm. That's basically faith. And sometimes you have people saying, I don't believe... you felt an experience. We felt an experience, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you hear people say, I don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe him or not is number one, not going to kill the fact that he exists. Mm. Number two, you do believe in something. Mm. You, you ought to search your soul and find what it is that you believe in and how it serves or it will save you. Yeah. So that is basically the gist of it, that faith is everything. For me and Molly, even throughout the book, mm. we would have been nothing without our faith in God. You took yes. me about the Hebrews 11 type of thing. Yes, that I find absolutely meaning unto my life apart from me now mm. reflecting on my relationship with God. When you come with every possible reason in the world to try and convince me that there is no God, the first question I ask you is, are you telling me that I am non-existent? Mm. Because I am, because God is. Yeah. And that has always been my explanation of my own personal yeah wow. yeah and maybe to add when people say they don't believe in in anything they actually believe in something because these are people that wake up every morning to go and serve something to go and do something so sometimes people who call them atheists think they're in a vacuum of non-belief yeah. it's just that they're unaware of what well, the classic is. example is them going yeah. in an aeroplane driven yeah, by a exactly, pilot they've yes. never met. Exactly. And then not knowing who the uh, you know the engineers yeah. are. Yeah. And they just take that plane and they fly to wherever. They yeah. have faith. So they have faith that they they'll get faith. there. Yeah. All right. Um, I have uh, you know made my listeners accustomed to an eleventh nugget, which is a bonus. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to surprise you ladies and give you an opportunity just to give us a bonus point. What is the one point that you want the listeners to take away from this this conversation? Iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. In fact, uh, I think you need to surround your, yourself with people that grow you. Mm -hmm. People, sometimes they won't necessarily have the same principles as you do, mm. but they have to hold esteem the things that are truly esteemed to you, mm -hmm. so that you are all as one moving towards the same direction mm -hmm. and it has to be people that really understand that journey so that you sharpen each other as you move along okay absolutely this is value. great stuff yeah now if someone was uh, who is watching this is interested in getting in touch with you or taking this conversation further how do they contact you we we have a facebook page we have two facebook pages Moz and cal's page we also have a page specific to this campaign brought up just right this campaign the, yes. that's for, that very campaign and still on facebook you can find you can find my name my 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 profile mulebuhe moli malomo kelly is kelly sebolai yeah she can i don't know if we have instagram we have instagram instagram is malls kels and then kelly underscore malls and kels yes and uh twitter is kelly underscore sebolai and malls and kels and twitter Okay. Yes, and YouTube is uh, Kelly underscore more than Kels. Okay, can I just uh, make a special request? Yes. Stay, stay straight to the uh, camera and ask them to subscribe to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. <laughs> special yeah. request. 
seriously, guys. You don't want to miss on this very important nugget. Mm. Please subscribe, subscribe, and you will get more, definitely. And this is the most fascinating thing. They come in variety of knowledge. If it's not financial, it's motivational. If it's not motivational, it goes even all the way to insurance. Mm. So really, if you want to be, if you want to have wealth of knowledge, why not subscribe? <laughs> the button is down. There. It remains for me to thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedules. Somewhat at short notice. Thank you for being my guest, ladies. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you very much. It's been awesome. Yeah.